Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. The two fighters, Bonavina and Mildenberger, are as, perhaps as different in their personalities as their fighting styles. Bonavina is a kind of gay blade, makes a lot of noise. They call him Ringo. He fashions his hair in the manner of Ringo Starr, one of the famed members of the Beatles Quartet. And he makes a lot of noise and he uses his hands a lot playfully. He's a funny guy to talk to, as you will see, because Angie Dundee and I did talk to him a couple of days ago at his training camp in Bad Soden, West Germany. Well, Angie Dundee, oh, <laughs> the roar of the second wild bull of the Pampas, Oscar Bonavina, of course. As I was saying, Angie Dundee hardly needs me to tell him what to ask a fighter, but be because our viewers will want to follow what you're talking about in Spanish, Angie, let me presumably lead you. Oscar has never fought a southpaw before. Uh, how is he going to make his fight against Mildenberger? Con Mildenberger, tu tienes pensamiento para que es zurdo. No, voy a subir arriba arriba. Y lo pienso todo arriba arriba. No, he says it doesn't make any difference right hand and left hand. He's going to go and attack him. What will be his principal weapon? Que la cosa principal que tu usas, que es la... Pegarle. Hit him. That's all he's going to do. He's going to hit him. You have often said, Angie, that the left hook is the best blow against the southpaw. Uh, yo solo necesito saber a vos de que la mano sinistra es la mejor cosa para los zurdos. ¿Qué tú piensas? Este, este buena. Pero con esto lo voy a noquear. Saca. He's going to hit him with the right hand, but flatten him with the left hook. <laughs> Ask him how long it's going to take. ¿Cuánto tiempo te pesó en que para...? Dos meses. No, para vincher con este combatamiento. Menos de dos rounds. It's going to be less than 12 rounds. But he doesn't want to state how early. The... ¿Cuándo no es definitivo que round? Antes de sexto. Six rounds. Six rounds. The sixth round. We wish you bluebirds in the spring, luck on the pampas, <laughs> and we hope that perhaps you'll go on no, into the semifinals. No, no, you. No, 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 okay. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Oscar. You're welcome. The story with Oscar Bonavino with Paul Mildenberger and his manager, Wolfgang Mueller. There is Carl Mildenberger, rated number one by the WBA, bouncing up and down in the ring as he awaits the start of this bout. Serious, purposeful, determined to become the heavyweight champion of the world, a different kind of man from Bonavina. You will meet him now as we talked with him two days ago, also at Bad Soden, West Germany. Carl Mildenberger to my left, of course, and his manager, Wolfgang Mueller, to his left. And, of course, Oscar Bonavina told us just a short while ago, Carl, that he was going to knock you out in the sixth round when you fight him. I wonder what your answer is to that. Bonavina had vorausgesagt, dass er dich in der sechsten Runde ausnimmt. Was hast du dazu? Cassius Clay auch gesagt. He just said uh, that uh, Cassius Clay said the same thing before the fight with him. <laughs> That's really not a bad answer. Of course, Bonavina is studiously preparing for Carl with a left hook, supposedly the best weapon against a southpaw. And how will Carl, how will you call counter that? Er hat sich auf den linken Haken spezialisiert. Ich glaube, dass das die beste Waffe ist. Ja, muss mich erst mal damit treffen und ich muss auf beide Fäuste aufpassen von ihm. First of all, uh, he should prove that he can uh, hit a left hand with a left hook, and Carl is prepared for both hands. All right, Bonavina is, as you both know, a very tough bull of a man. He's never been knocked out. Only Zora Foley has flawed him. Do you think you can knock him out? Nur Zora Foley hat ihn bisher am Boden gehabt. Glaubst du, dass du ihn ausnocken kannst? Ausnocken ist zu viel gesagt, aber ich werde es versuchen. He's not, uh, he would not say that he will knock him out, but if he has the chance, he will try it. You are prepared, however, for a 12-round fight, and that's what you really expect, victory by a decision. This is what we think should be the outcome. All right, good luck to you, Carl. It's nice to be with you again. Thank you, Wolfgang. Carl Mildenberger and Wolfgang Mueller. We are back live in Frankfurt, West Germany. You are saying Ringo Bonavina and Carl Mildenberger. Inside the ring as we get ready for tonight's WBA heavyweight elimination fight. Quickly, the scoring rules for tonight's contest. The five-point must scoring system will be in effect. The winner of a round must get five points, the loser a lesser number. The mandatory eight-count for knockdowns will be employed. 
three knockdowns within a round will not automatically terminate the fight. Counting will continue after the bell, except, of course, for the bell ending for the 12th and final round. In other words, you cannot be saved by the bell. Knocked down with five seconds to go. If you remain prostrate on the floor, counting will continue. This fight can end on a foul, let me tell you now, so that there will be no subsequent controversy. Three foul warnings officially rendered by the referee to the officials will result in the termination of the fight, and the man fouled three times will be declared the winner. The officials for tonight's fight, the referee. We've just had a roar from the ring. I should tell you, too, very quickly that we do have a prior champion at ringside, Ingemar Johansson, who came into prominence in 1959 when he knocked out Floyd Patterson in the third round at Yankee Stadium. The officials, the referee, Harry Krause, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, now resident in Las Vegas, a well-known American fight referee who refereed the Patterson-Ali fight. He refer refereed one Patterson-Liston fight, also refereed other fights such as Fulma Perret. The judges, Dr. Jose Stern of Argentina and Mr. Rudolf Druss of West Germany, who is also prominent in this country as a fight referee. Now I want to turn to Angelo Dundee as the fighters continue to warm up within the ring prior to the start of the bout. It's a very, very small ring. We've just had a local fighter introduced here, Angie. Only 16 and a half feet square. Can this have an effect on this bout? Oh, yeah, this is a Bonavita ring, definitely. He'll be able to try to get this guy in corners, and then and, uh, Millenberg won't be able to run. But one thing I would have made sure I had a big ring in there for anybody, because for, especially for a boxer. And one thing about, I noticed that they put rosin down for... Uh, the national anthem, Angie. Argentina. Yes.
Argentinian anthem and now West Germany. We'll be back right after this message for the Mildenberger Bonavina fight. Well, we're finally ready for the start of the Mildenberger Bonavina fight. Mildenberger will be in the white trunks, Bonavina in the dark trunks. As you see the floor of your ring during the course of the fight, you will see some white material on it. It is rosin brought by the Bonavina people. They have placed it on the ring so that Bonavina will not be subject to slipping. It shouldn't matter to Mildenberger. He is wearing sneakers. We should tell you quickly as we await the bell for round one, the fighters will be using six ounce gloves. And Angie, six ounce gloves mean another advantage for Bonavina. Oh, it's definitely an advantage. Uh, he's definitely a puncher. The other fellow is the boxer. That just gives him a big advantage in the fight. Round one underway. Watch Mildenberger circle clockwise to his right. This can be a serious problem for Mildenberger because he is circling into the strength of Bonavina, which is the left hook. There you saw it. it did not connect, really. Mildenberger using his most effective weapon, the pawing jab. and surprisingly, Bonavina is not moving steadily forward, as most people think he must. On the other hand, he may be suffering Mildenberg. seconds ago saying that so far Bonavina is fighting all wrong. We're both astonished. At least I am, Angelo, aren't you? I'm surprised he should be going to the fellow and he's backing off. He's going to look to counter a southpaw, which is very difficult. Remember in our talk with Angie earlier, tactically, and this is a fight of tactics, if Mildenberger can survive the first five, six rounds, he then figures... for going down early but again remember like Patterson he goes down often and gets up off we have 20 seconds left in this first round Mildenberger is definitely hurt as you heard Angie say
the submarine Illuminat. Where Vina come up. Start of round two. Bonavina against Mildenberger. Bonavina in the dark trunks. Angelo Dundee is scoring on the side here. Scored the first round five points for Bonavina, three for Mildenberger. We'll keep you abreast of Angie's scoring as we go. Again, Mildenberger in the white trunks, Bonavina in the black. Right lead to the stomach, and the left hook caught Mildenberger again, and he's in trouble again. He must stay away, Angelo, if he's to survive. Well, no, that, that left hook's always going to get in there. Paul scoring with a left to the stomach. Bonavina holding for the first time, but not really hurt. Now against Muhammad, Mil Mildenberger was a sucker for a straight right. But that right was to the head. Bonavino won't be able to hit him that way. Tell them why not, Angelo. Well, because it's a foul, and they, they watched it here very closely. Uh, Mildenberger, by the way, is cut already over the right eye. You mean a foul because Bonavina is not tall as Ali is and will be striking the right to the stomach and will be hitting downward. That's correct. The whole trick to this fight, though, Howard, is that left hook because he's a converted softball, Bonavina. Amazing that Mildenberger would stick to these tactics. He continues when he circles the circle clock. There's the right jab, but it does not damage, and he was open for a straight right to the head. We have a minute to go in the second round. A slip, not a knockdown. for Bonavina, in better condition than I've ever seen him. Condition has always been a problem with him. Half minute to go in this second round. Meet two down three. Angelo Dundee scored the second round. Bonavina five. Mildenberger five. He scored the round even. He has Bonavina leading ten points to eight at this point. They worked on Mildenberger's right eye between rounds. At this moment, it seems to be in reasonable shape. in this round. The background noise you're hearing, there is a group here of Argentinians who keep calling Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. that it was a warning of a foul. Yes, because he was looking to hit him when he was down, but he didn't hit him. The referee reprimanded him for trying to hit him while he was down. But this will not be recorded officially with the officials as one no, of three foul warnings. It's not. We have a minute, 15 seconds left in round three.
right lead to the belly with a minute to go in the round from Bonavina, followed by an attempted left hook. Neither did it. Milton Berger left himself open then, losing his balance. Odd if either fighter should lose his balance, it would be Bonavina. Because he walks with his toes extended upward in the air. in the black trunks call Milton Berger in the white don't forget immediately after the termination of wide world of sports today we're taking you direct to College Station Texas for SMU against Texas A&M with Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson at this moment Angelo Dundee has this fight scored 15 points for Bonavina and 12 for Milton Berger crowd there but token their excitement over an attempted blow by Mildenberger that did not land. <laughs> Bonavina in the black trunks, Mildenberger in the white. Graceless, effective when he lands, that's Bonavina. We have gone a minute and a half into this, the fourth round. And I sense Mildenberger at this moment gaining in confidence, don't you, Angie? Oh, yes, because Bonavina's waiting on him too long. He must, he must go and attack the guy more. But the odd part about this strike is two sophomores fighting each other. Only thing Bonavina's staying right-handed. Here goes that left hook. But it did not get to Mildenberger the way the earlier one did that knocked him down in the first round. The left got in there. Not joltingly. Crowd excitement, but nothing really. 35 seconds to go in this before round. We have 15 seconds left in the fourth round, and this was clearly Mildenberger's best round thus far. going to break for a commercial and did not. There you saw the continued counting after the bell. That knockdown at the end of the round gave that round to Bonavina. Again, he caught Mildenberger with the left hook. And we scored that round. Bonavina five points, Mildenberger four. Bonavina leading 20 to 16 as Angelo Dundee sees it. And I think Bonavina is getting away with murder here because of Mildenberger's lapses. Don't you, uh, Angie? Yes, because uh, Mildenberger should be sticking more, but he's not. Now, bon Mildenberger was winning the round up until the time of the knockdown. So that's how Bonavina got the round on the knockdown, but it wasn't a big round. He just won it 
The moment Mildenberger discards his tactics of moving backwards, jabbing, moving away, jabbing, he's in trouble, and repeatedly he does. We move now to the start of round five. Bonavina in the black trunks, Mildenberger in the white. Mildenberger has been knocked down twice thus far in the bout, in the first round and in the fourth. He does not appear, however, to have been seriously weakened by either knockdown. For the first four rounds, you've seen a puncher against a man with no punch. A man who can't box against a man who can, but who doesn't, use his boxing ability to the best possible advantage against a stronger, harder-hitting opponent. One minute gone by in the fifth round. Mildenberger's trying to use that right jab to the body, trying to bring the fellow's hands down to nail him with a good left hand. That's what he's looking for. But he got nailed again with a left. Well, that's what happens. The strength of Bonavine is telling right now. Same thing against Muhammad Angelo. He kept moving forward. Well, it, I tell you, Mildenberg is fighting a little better now. He's looking to set his man up. But the awkwardness of Bonavina is what's saving him. open again. Naturally, the crowd, Mildenberger minded here in Frankfurt, West Germany, got excited. We have 15 seconds left in this, the sixth round of the fight. Correction, the fifth. Mildenberger at the start of the sixth round. Mildenberger is in the white trunks, Bonavina in the black, and in the last round, a point was taken away from Bonavina for a low punch. So that round would be, according to Angie Dundee, scoring either even or Mildenberger's round. It's hard to evaluate. Don't forget, when Wide World of Sports ends today, you'll be going to College Station, Texas. Texas A&M against SMU, the start of the great NCAA college football schedule for this season. The men of Gene Stallings against the men of Hayden Fry. is hurt, claiming low blow. its reaction. Bonavina got butted, butted badly. Not cut though, Angelo, not no cut, blood. Not cut, no blood, but he got butted. A minute and a half to go in the sixth round. Crowd awakening to the action. This was the round that Bonavina predicted he would knock Mildenberger out in.
against Mildenberg. With a minute to go in round six. Argentinian chant Ringo. Bonavina in the black trunks, Mildenberger in the white. Oddly, up till this point, Angelo Dundee and Nat Fleischer, the editor and publisher of Ring Magazine, have scored this bout identically. 28 points for Bonavina, 26 for Mildenberger. On both cards, Mildenberger won the last round. wonder if Bonavina can knock Mildenberger out. If this fight now runs to form, Mildenberger will begin getting the boxing edge. A left hit Mildenberger, he sought to retaliate with a right that did not connect, though it provoked crowd roars. He definitely heard him, but definitely was a knockdown. Referee called it right. Knockdown. Heard Angie in the midst of some confusion here at ringside reiterate my call of a knockdown. A minute to go and this the seventh round. I would instill the strength of Bonavino, which is dominating this fight. This is why he's getting away with everything, because he's fighting and backing up. Middleburg should be taking advantage of but he isn't. It's that strictly that converted southpaw style of Bonavina, which is winning them the fight thus far. Bonavina punishing Mildenberger in this one-sided exchange. We have 23 seconds left in this for seventh round. with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this message from our local stations. This is the ABC. You're looking at Carl Mildenberger as we get ready for the start of round eight. And Harry Krause, the referee, just confirmed to me that that was a knockdown in the seventh round. It sure was, he said. Anytime your glove touches the canvas, it's a knockdown, and of course, Mildenberger's glove dead. The right lead surprised Mildenberger again. Those occasional right leads are getting to him. Bonavina in the black trunks, Mildenberger in the white.
Hildenberger rated by the World Boxing Association prior to this bout number one. Bonavina rated number three. In perfect candor, Angelo, these men are not Muhammad Ali's. Well, after all, Muhammad Ali already licked Middlenberger, and you know, in this type of a style for him would have been duck soup. Bonavinas, you mean? Yes, definitely. Waiting on him, he would have got really beat up. But we might believe to the stomach, Angie, against Mildenberger. Backed him off. That's, a, that's, a, that's the way he wants to fight him, under and over. And the hook is the power shot. Paul scored with the right jab, but even as in the case of the Muhammad Ali fight, it evokes roars from a partisan crowd out of proportion to its effectiveness. He hurt, he hurt him again with the right lead to the stomach. Bonavina hurt Mildenberger. Mildenberger's in jeopardy here. He's got to stay away from him. Angelo Dundee with this reporter, Howard Cosell, at ringside here in Frankfurt, West Germany. The right lead again. At this point, with a minute to go in this round, the strength of Bonavina seems to be gradually overcoming Mildenberg. And of course, nobody could talk with more authority about Muhammad Ali or about Jimmy Ellis or about boxing than Angelo Dundee. He's the man who guided Ali to the title and hopes to do the same with Jimmy Ellis in this tournament as the referee breaks the fighters. We have a half minute to go in this round. Round eight, Bonavina, back to you against Mildenberg. With a left. We begin round nine. A Mildenberger in the white trunks, Bonavina in the black. The accumulative scoring totals of both Angelo Dundee, who's with me at ringside, and Nat Fleischer of Ring Magazine, the editor and publisher, show Bonavina ahead 38 to 33. The awkwardness and the strength of Bonavina, the telling points thus far. Neither fighter exactly gifted in the classic role. Angie, I think it's time for a square question. Angelo Dundee, how could Mildenberger have looked so much more effective against Muhammad Ali than against this clumsy opponent? Well, the awkwardness of Bonavino is what's making him win. Against the classic boxer, Mildenberger knew the answer. But remember one thing, uh, Muhammad Ali, there's only one guy like him. He made everybody look good. So it's not surprising that Mildenberger looked good with him. He made Cleveland Williams look good? Well, you got a good exception there. <laughs> a minute and a half gone, and this the ninth round. Bonavina facing us, Mildenberger to the right of your screen in the white trunk. Right lead to the stomach by Bonavina, that time did not win. to go. Mildenberger jab. However, Bonavina substantially slipped the punch. That shot Mildenberger got in in this fight. He has Bonavina holding and bowling. A left and a right in combination. Mildenberger's first display of power against Bonavina, and this crowd is 
is going wild. Milden Burgett to the attack. We have 15 seconds left in the ninth round. at Bonavina for the first time in this fight a little bit confused that was a good combination that Milton Berger hit him with Angelo Dundee real good walked in with a jab to the body jab to the body straight left hand he set him up pretty and this is the kind of fight he's got to fight to come on to win now evidently Bonavina's starting to pay for his mistakes of waiting on the guy 42 to 38 is the way Angelo Dundee has it scored, having given that round to Milden Berger, the chance of the crowd in the background. Milda, 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 which is, of course, short for Milden Berger. Just outside of Milden Berger's corner, by the way, a live little pig. It's an old Frankfurt, West Germany custom. Once a champion fighter gave a fighter a pig, and one has given one to Milden Berger. Start of round 10. Bonavina in the black trunks. Mildenberger in the white. And I think it's a fair statement that at this moment, Bonavina has more respect for Mildenberger than he did. Bonavina is not a fighter who likes to get hurt. I say one thing that uh, Mildenberger surprised me hurt him with that punch. It, it didn't look that authoritative, but Bonavina definitely was hurt and he grabbed and held. I have seen other fighters who respond better to punishment than Bonavina, haven't you? Well, I've seen him, but the thing is this, we don't know what the effect of that punch is going to have on him from the, out, from the rest of this fight now. Right lead again, but high on the chest and not damaging by Bonavina. complaining to the referee but in perfect honesty it's hard to see what about he's complaining that Mindenberg is grabbing him behind the head and hit him with his left hand I didn't see it did you oh yeah I saw it he grabbed you every thought he did every time they clinch he grabbed him behind the head you can catch it Bonavena slipped of his own volition. Hildenberger again in combination. Hildenberger is fighting this fight right now and he's got Bonavita eating out of his hand. There was the grabbing that Bonavita complained about a moment ago. That time clearly visible. in a strange way after taking as much punishment as Mildenberger has toying with Bonavina. He's made Bonavina careful. Yes, he has. He's making him respect him. And that's what he had to bring it out. Respect him. Now he's trying to outbust him real well. We have 35 seconds left in this round. seconds to go. Another good round for Mildenberger. Mildenberger against Bonavina. Oh. A left hook. Garrick Mildenberger as he was coming in. I can't hear that bell. There's something wrong with that bell. It's not loud enough. And neither fighter heard the bell. 
They are working on Mildenberger now with the salt. Just as Mildenberger was assuming some degree of control of this fight, according to his own tactics, the left hook came joltingly in there. Almost savagely, really, because Bonavina has ox-like power, and down went Mildenberg. Four knockdowns in this fight, recorded by Bonavina against Mildenberg. And how do you have it scored now, Angelo? I've got it scored 47-42. Uh, Mildenberg was winning the round. That's why I couldn't give Bonavina three, uh, uh, three points. I gave him 5-4. We are ready now for round 11. And now it's Mildenberger who's back to circling and backing away because of that left hook that ended the 10th round. Bonavina in the black trunks using the left hook again. And Mildenberger, of course, in the white. Looking dismayed at this moment in Mildenberger's corner is Peter Mueller, former German middleweight champion. And of course his manager Wolfgang Mueller. Materially slackened. Bonavina will have gone through this 12 rounds better than any distance we've previously seen him. Unless by some strange quirk of fate, Angelo Dundee is knocked out. Well, I feel that he's he's uh, gotten his confidence back and he has the other fellow hurt. And uh, Milleberg has nothing to hurt him with right now. But Bonavina better not gamble because he can punch through with the left hand. And that was the left that just got into Bonavina. With a minute to go in this, the 11th round of a 12-round bout, Bonavina in the black trunks, Mildenberger in the white. minute to go in the 11th round. The likelihood is, based upon our time commitments, we will not go into the ring after this bout. We will be going, of course, as soon as Wide World is over, to College Station, Texas. Texas A&M against SMU with Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkins. and final round, Mildenberger, White Trunks, Bonavina, Black Trunks, Bonavina apparently safely ahead, and this the third quarter final match of the WBA Heavyweight Elimination Tournament, Bonavina belaboring Mildenberger against the rope. This World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Tournament is of course sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, which was founded in 1921, which is the only governing body in boxing recognized throughout the world. The Voluntary Association of 48 States and City Athletic Commissions in the United States with 12 major affiliates overseas. Bob Evans of Louisville, Kentucky is the president of the WBA and he is here at ringside tonight. We come down the final stretch. 52 points for Bonavina. 46 for Mildenberger, as scored by Angelo Dundee. At ringside here with this report. The precise scoring also by Nat Fleischer, the famed publisher and editor of Ring Magazine. The left hook and 
Mildenberger is a tired fighter at this point. Minute and a half to go in the final round, round 12. Immediately we have the decision. We're sending you right back to Jim McKay in New York. And then College Station, Texas for the start of the NCAA college football season. Texas A&M against SMU. Ringo, those few Argentinians who are here, he now knows he has it won, Angelo. Well, I'll tell you, the spin, the strength, and the punch has done the job in the awkwardness of Bonavina, and he's a converted southpaw. That's what's messed up Middlenburg. He couldn't figure out which way Bonavina's going. Quickly, before the bout terminates, and before we go back to New York and Jim, Jimmy Ellis, your man, may have to fight Bonavina. Is Bonavina too strong for him? I don't know about that. Jimmy Ellis is a good fighter, and I've said this before, egotistically, Jimmy Ellis is going to win it all. A prediction by Angelo Dundee as Bonavina awkwardly flails away with 15 seconds to go before the end of the bout. dejection in the Mildenberger corner. It would be a total shock. Wouldn't you agree, Angelo, if this fight were given on a decision to Mildenberg? Oh, there's going to be no way. I mean, it was uh, Bonavina, the knockdown, uh, the ability to take Mildenberger's best punches, and he reacted every time he came back with the best, strongest punches. Let's just at this moment, while we await the, the decision, go back to Jim McKay in New York. Howard, it's just a quick reminder here that college football, as you said, is coming up right after the decision in this fight. It'll be SMU against Texas A&M at College Station, Texas, live in color on ABC over most of these stations. And there's uh, uh, Ringo, very, very happy. The decision, however, has still not been rendered. Next week on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's going to be the World Water Skiing Championships and the Darlington Southern 500 Stock Car Race. Two great shows and an all-color show next week. Howard, a lot of happiness over there. Back to you. The decision has been announced. They didn't give the voting as yet. They have not given the voting, but they have declared Oscar Bonavina the winner of this quarterfinal match in the World Boxing Association-sponsored heavyweight elimination tournament. The next quarterfinal will be October 28th. Jerry Quarry, who knocked out Billy Daniels in the first round last night against Floyd Patterson, the two fought previously. It's a happy Oscar Ringo Bonavina. Clumsy, awkward, graceless, we said, but admittedly powerful and hard punch. We're going to try and stay with you here in Frankfurt, West Germany, to find out if the decision is unanimous. Harry Krause. We are trying to get Harry Krause over here. The decision is official. Ringo Bonavina, the winner. But the scoring, the unanimity, has yet not yet been announced, and we are trying desperately. Angelo is screaming the referee, Harry Krause, to try and get it. We're going to have to leave you from Frankfurt, West Germany. Oscar Bonavina has decision. Call Mildenberger back to Jim McKay in New York City.